This is not a small car. This is a big idea, a massive dream. It's the automotive event of a lifetime. No, it's more than that. This is the industrial event of a lifetime. This is, at long last, the Tata Nano. And so after everyone said that it couldn't be done, after battling everything from Shingo to the economic downturn, here it is at last, the Nano, the one lakh car, the people's car. But a people's car comes with people's concerns. So we went out and asked people what they expected from the Nano. And here's what they had to say. I just can't believe they can do it for that money. Because there must be some problems with it. Is it really going to cost one lakh of rupees? I would like to know what speed, the max speed that I can go on this. It's good for people who could not afford any cars. Now they're, they will be able to buy. I don't know whether does it give you AC and what other comfort do you get in your land? If the government doesn't do anything, I think Mr. Ratan Tata is doing something better. It was not expected from Tata people that they'll uh, bring out such a sleek and slim vehicle. Otherwise, they are basically truck, truck manufacturers. <laughs> now, let's face it. Everyone's got concerns about the Nano. I mean, internationally too, everyone's been laughing about it and making jokes about what to expect from a one lakh car. But the truth is, we can't see why everyone's laughing. I mean, the Americans can't afford to laugh because, let's face it, the Americans can't afford anything these days. The Brits can't afford to laugh because the company that makes this car owns the two biggest British brands, Jaguar and Land Rover. And the Germans can't afford to laugh because, well, they don't know how to. But the main reason everyone should stop laughing now is because this is actually a really good car. I have to confess, when we first heard about Tata making a 1 lakh rupee car, we expected something with bars instead of doors and plastic flaps to keep out the rain. But look at this. This is as real a car as any other small car. But what people want to know is, does it drive like a small car? Now the good news is that no, the Nano just doesn't look like a real car, it drives like one too. Given that this is the one lakh car, I half expected to find not an engine, but hundreds of hamsters working their exercise wheels, pushing this thing along. But no, I was in for a pleasant surprise. So the Nano is a two-cylinder 623cc petrol engine that's been completely made out of nice lightweight aluminum. If you want a point of comparison, the next cheapest car in the country, the Maruti 800, has a 796cc three-cylinder engine. So the Nano's got one less cylinder and 170cc less. The engine on the Nano gives you about 34 horsepower and 48 newton meters of torque. Now the Maruti 800, on the other hand, does about 37 horsepower and 59 newton meters of torque. So the Nano might seem a little underpowered in comparison. But bear in mind that this car weighs only 600 kilos, or more than 50 kilos lighter than the 800. Now a lot of people are going to move from motorbikes to this. This is going to be their first ever car. Thankfully, I'm proud to report that this Nano does not disappoint. Now the Nano drives like any other small car, there's enough power in the lower gears to get you through the gaps in city traffic easily and the throttle response is pretty quick and easy too. And because it's only 3.1 meters long, you're more likely to find one of those gaps too. And that's not all, it really doesn't start struggling at high speeds either, much like the 800, this thing seems happy to clip along at 80 kilometers an hour. What I like the most about the way the Nano drives is that this car never reminds you of the fact that it is a low-cost car. It just drives like any other. Now the Nano's got its engine at the rear, behind the passenger compartment. And it's a rear-wheel drive car, which means that the power goes to the rear wheels and not the front ones. That makes the Nano the only car in its class that has rear-wheel drive. Now this is good because that means the rear wheels power the car forward while the front wheels are free to work on just the steering. In fact, the only other popular car manufacturer I can think of that has rear wheel drive and rear engine layouts is Porsche. So technically, I'm in the world's cheapest Porsche. 
and theoretically, because it's rear wheel drive this car, I could do a lot of cool drifts and sideways slides. Yes, that's cool. And no, I'm not gonna try it. Come on! Yeah. Now in case you're still not convinced, the Nano's got another trick up its sleeve. India's favorite trick actually, great mileage. Now Tata says the car will give you up to 22 kilometers to the litre and that's pretty much the best mileage you can get on four wheels unless of course you strap two motorcycles together. Like this man. And this is a petrol engine so imagine what will happen when Tata launches their diesel which is coming sooner than you think. Come on, come on, come on.